So it's interesting because I heard from one of the, the uh, from a broadcaster with whom I had lunch last week, he described this year's upfronts as the year of favors. That everybody mm -hmm. was like, you know what, I'm gonna give you my money, here we go, but I need a favor, because I gotta, because it's that currency with the client that you're getting more for less, you know, you're getting cheaper toilet paper, right. like that procurement side of it, right? Mm -hmm. How do we balance that if we're trying to get, you know, if we're buying more up funnel, which is consideration, recall, you know, et cetera, if we're, if we're moving dollars there, but yet we're still trying to get more for less, like, is it about performance and value of the media or is it about the cost of the media? I mean, I'm still, yeah. we keep talking, I mean, as an industry holistically, we're talking on both sides of our mouth, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're talking on both sides of our mouth. I think what we're doing is we're setting ourselves up for a fairly large supply issue as it relates to digital video specifically, right? Because most organizations in the upfront focus on premium video, which is which can be you know termed or defined a number of different ways, but it's typically distribution related, mm -hmm. right? I have a comfort with portals. I have a comfort with broadcast networks. I have a comfort with cable networks. Um, those are the folks that I'm going to have a longer term commitment with. And now we, and, and from my organization's perspective, we need to find the next area of value, right? We need to start to look at programmatic environments, platform buying practices, and determine whether or not another dollar spent there is more valuable than an offline or linear TV investment or more valuable than a, than a premium investment. And if we don't do that, frankly, our prices are going to go up, which would be uh, which would be challenging right. for us. So, so we're spending a lot of our time saying, "Hey, listen, we have all these great, we have, you know, we have all these great levers that we can pull relative to programmatic, and we have all these great insights that we can borrow from premium. How are we going to apply them? And what's that? What's that kind of cost relationship?" No one's talked about video ad networks in this conversation, right? And and but we we talked a lot about audience guarantees and GRP. And I mean, if we talk about aggregating audience, you know, it's kind of what ad networks do, right? Mm -hmm. We've mentioned programmatic, but I mean, what is their role in the video ecosystem? I mean, are they destroying value? Are they creating value for pub? Let's take the publisher lens and then let's take the, the buy side lens, right? right? Like what's their role today? Um, well, from a publisher perspective, I think they're creating a tremendous amount of value, right? Because uh, I mean, said or put simply in a, it's a gross generalization but typically they're representing inventory that's not going anywhere anyway so they are if they are selling inventory you're making more money than you were making prior um, but I think there's a significant amount of intelligence that's associated with some of the primary uh, ad networks as well the collectives of the world uh, the Yumi's of the world and and certainly others and I think the folks certainly at collective wouldn't love that I refer to them as that but I but I think it's a fair kind mm -hmm. of a fair kind of a treatment. And the reason for that is because they've aligned themselves with data partnerships that are proprietary to them, things like Collective's relationship with Rentrack and mm -hmm. the development of a TV Accelerator. Yumi has gone out and aggregated a bunch of inventory that was totally fragmented around c connected devices, right? And marketers, it's another challenge for marketers. How are we going to make sense of that world? They represent you know, kind of an avenue or a, an area of exploration, certainly do that at scale. So I, I think they're delivering a tremendous amount of value. I just think from a buyer's standpoint, it, it's a bit tactical, right? So we have specific initiatives where TV Accelerator makes a ton of sense. But is TV Accelerator a re re recurring purchase for us specifically? I, I don't know. I, you know, our business would suggest it's not. Whereas like a programmatic, uh, a programmatic environment is much more dynamic, right? You can, you can manage against a number of different performance indices and you can get all around it within the confines of one particular campaign. So it's interesting, right? Because we talk about video being nascent because you know we're seeking things like measurability with OCR and stuff like that to try and sort of accelerate and mature it so we can buy it in a construct that is familiar and makes us feel safe. But you know, we say it's emerging, but yet it's interesting. We fall we fall into the same paradigm of commodity and tonnage, right? Which is kind of the ad network play versus adjacency, storytelling, right? Like, you know, up funnel stuff. I mean, is there is there something in the middle? Like what's is there a middle ground or is it really just about, you know, eyeballs and be able to to move, to actually buy against a guarantee and reach and frequency or and it, is it about something that we can't really measure in a meaningful way? It's, you know, more qualitative than quantitative. Like is is there some middle ground? Yeah, is that where the market matures? I want you to answer, I'll, but I'm looking at these guys yeah. as well because, I mean, Jordan, I wanna, I'm going to come to you and talk about it because you brought up qualitative in the first place, right? But I would love for you because I know that you're executing dollars against a video strategy. Yeah, yeah. so I think there is a middle ground. 
right? And I and this is a, a bit of a forward-looking view, and, it, and I'm, I'm not speaking on anyone except for my own behalf right now. Um, I think there's going to be a consolidation of advertising at large, right? I think marketers are starting to realize the good from the bad, and I don't think that's going to encourage increased investment. Certain pockets of display advertising and viewability. Don, can you clarify what you mean? You mean that on the consolidation? If you call me Donnie, the, I'll clarify what I mean. Donnie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I'm very sorry. Can you clarify what you mean on the sell side, on the aggregation side, on the network side? Uh, from a publisher standpoint. Right, so that would that would impact all the sales side, that would impact the network side, that would impact everyone. Okay. But this notion that hey, we you know we at one point designed our in our publishing platforms to recognize as much monetization opportunity as possible, as many ads as possible, right? Okay. So top of the page, middle of the page, below the fold, anywhere where we can put uh, an advertisement that doesn't impact content, that's where we'll put an ad. Okay. And technologies like viewability are like well some of this stuff is never getting seen, right? So there's probably not much value to mm -hmm. that. And I think what folks have kind of triangulated around is like, wow, like the Hulus, for instance, and certainly folks like Keep on the mobile side and, and a number of other folks are saying, well, if you think about value proposition and ad load, you know, the amount of advertising in relationship to a valuable experience for a consumer, well, there's this kind of inverse relationship, right? You shrink down the amount of time a person is prevented from getting to content that they want, and the benefit, there's a halo benefit to a brand. So loosely speaking, but it works. Like a, a lighter ad load drives up brand awareness and brand preference. So I, okay. I, I think what people are starting to realize, certainly from an advertising standpoint, is like, and a marketing standpoint, is like, hey, I don't need to spend as much. I just need to spend in the right ways. That sounds very operationally intense for an agency, though. I don't. Well, I don't know if that's true. I think you okay. because like vi video is one of those things that historically hasn't been very cluttered. If you're purchasing in a certain manner, okay. if you take away in-page stuff and you focus on in-player stuff, there you know you okay. lighten the load pretty significantly. So, so we can deliver to that mandate and still become more efficient operationally on the agency buy side. I believe so, and it also it opens up the opportunity to focus on what we term like non-campaign related initiatives, which is more of a, cr a storytelling approach, a transmedia approach, more creative media planning uh -huh. that's fueled by you know a whole bunch of stuff consumer intelligence only new product initiatives um, any anything else that would that would uh, drive a new concept or a new architecture to go to market but I think but the idea for us certainly is like these like Geico's of the world and the capital ones of the world these very successful organizations that are advertising 52 weeks of the year mm -hmm. those guys are going to be advertising 52 weeks of the year they're going to be advertising around areas that drive the most val uh, value and they're going to continue to create these unique consumer experiences on top of that. And that hopefully brings us closer to kind of the right, the right mix.